Arise, queens. This is the All Queens Army, where women are provided with the tools you need to overcome your fears, face your flaws, and experience breakthroughs as you develop self-esteem so strong you emanate royalty. Now, for your host and commander of the All Queens Army, Breezy Time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the All Queens Army podcast. This is your girl, your host, Breezy Time. I am here today with another dope episode for the Queens. Yes, honey, we are here today to have a conversation, y'all. And this one is going to be a little bit different. I have to introduce all of the Queens to a slightly familiar voice. This is one of my besties who is coming on the show today. And we are creating a new segment for the Queens. And I'm going to tell y'all why, because yes, I do put people on blast, honey. Yes, I do. But at any rate, before we jump into that, because I'm going to be more on blast today, honey. Before we jump into that, I want to, of course, ask all of the queens a favor. I do not ask you queens for anything. No money, no cash, no nothing other than to make sure that you have followed All Queens Army on IG and on Facebook and to subscribe to the All Queens Army podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and www.allqueensarmy.com. So make sure you subscribe to your girl and drop me. Um, Just tell me how good the podcast is or how bad or if you got an issue or you got a question or whatever you feel like you want to say. All right, cool. Okay, so anyway, today is Thursday. And on Thursdays, every other Thursday, mind you, not every Thursday, but every other Thursday, we have a new segment with my bestie, Simone. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. So Simone is coming on every other Thursday just so that we can talk about what is going on in the Instagram, internet, Facebook community. Is that what it's called? Like the uh, I think so. Instagram, I don't know. The internet is sphere, whatever. Um, yeah, you social made that media. up. <laughs> <laughs> the world of social media, like the virtual reality is, I guess what we can call it. What we're doing is we are just discussing hot topics, kind of not like Wendy. I mean, we ain't going to be throwing nobody no shade, but we are going to be talking about, we could be talking about Wendy, child. Yes. Listen, <laughs> Wendy got some things going on right yes, now. Yes, she does. Woo, honey. But I guess <laughs> karma. Yeah. I think so. That's. How I see it. Yeah, me too. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that's her job, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. And she's rubbed a lot of people wrong from back on the radio. Yes. I mean, back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Remember her and Whitney? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I don't know. I guess maybe, you know, when you throw shade, this is your whole career. It comes back to bite yes. you, right? But we're going to talk about Wendy in another episode because I know y'all know what's going on with Miss Williams. So anyway, we are not going to be throwing shade like that because I don't like bad karma coming back to bite me. (laughs) (laughs) But we will be talking about uh, just hot topics, things that are going on in the queen community, in the world of social media, in virtual reality, and all of the things that we see on the internet. So it's not celebrity gossip. I tell y'all, we do not do gossip. We just have queen conversations, honey. So that's what we're going to be talking about. And that's what this segment is going to be about. It is Queen Conversations. All right, Queens. So Simone is the owner of one of my favorite businesses, Soulless and Queens. When I have an event, which I haven't had in a while, I probably need to make one up for the summertime. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) when I have an event, I only use Bubbly Bartenders. It is a mobile bartending company that my bestie Simone has opened, started, and run for how many years? We had about six years now. Mm -hmm. Child, and some of y'all be struggling to get a business started, including myself, <laughs> <laughs> for six months, okay? But no, but that's real boss shit, and I love it. So please make sure that you guys go and follow Bubbly Bartenders on Instagram, and or if you have, and she is mobile, okay? She is yes. mobile. So if you have an event that needs a bartender, okay? you need to contact her. She can be reached at 443-657-3901. All right. So now that we have had that conversation, okay, go support my bestie. I don't want to hear the shit. Go do it. Okay. Do it now. All right. We're going to jump into today's episode. And what we're going to be talking about, unfortunately, is Nipsey Hustle. Okay. So on Sunday last week, by the time you guys hear this, it might be like two weeks out, maybe even three. 
But unfortunately, Nipsey Hussle passed away. If you guys do not know who Nipsey Hussle is, you probably do know his girlfriend, I think fiance, because I think they were engaged. I believe so. But his fiance is Lauren London. And if you don't know who Lauren London is, she played on I probably the most notable film was ATL. Yes. With T.I. Mm-hmm. And um, very, very, very pretty young girl. She is, um, I mean, she's been in quite a few movies, actually. Mm-hmm. This Christmas. Mm-hmm. And then she was on the show, The Game, when it was yes. rebooted and put on BET. Yep. So she is definitely a known name within the African-American actress community. She's a very, very pretty girl. I believe they have a son together. Yes, that, he's two years old. Yeah, two. And then she has a son with... Little Wayne. Yep. How do you know how old he is? Nine. Okay, I think, I think he is mm-hmm. nine. So yeah, so she's been in the game for a minute. And unfortunately, Nipsey Hussle passed away and he was her fiance. If you don't know who Nipsey is... I'm sure you guys have seen all of the social media Mm -hmm. um, posts because you can't even log on to Instagram without seeing something either going up your timeline about him or even in your explore page because for a day, definitely in your explore page, girl, like a whole day, it was that was my whole explore page. Like I was, I couldn't take it. I was like, okay, I'm off of social media for today. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be talking about today, Queens. We're just talking about the fact that his life was taken way too soon, prematurely. So Simone, how did you, like, what what was your, I don't want to say experience, but like, how did you hear, first hear about Nipsey Hussle? My boyfriend actually texted me about Mm -hmm. it. He was actually a fan. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm sure he was a fan. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they had a lot of the same beliefs and mm-hmm. things like that. So he he was a fan. I wasn't a fan, but I had been hearing about him for mm-hmm. a while. Meaning I didn't hear any of his music right. before him. Right. And like he would play his music. That was his workout music and things like that. Mm-hmm. So he texted me and I was like, okay, well, let me go look it up. Because I was like, he kind of called it. He, you know, he'll... He believes in things a little bit deeper than I do. So, my kind of dude. (laughs) (laughs) You know, when they were talking about the whole Dr. Mm Sabi documentary and things like that, when he heard that he was doing it, he was like, something could possibly happen. Right. So, when he he was like, I knew this was going to happen. You know, I can't say that that's what it is or that isn't. Right. Because it's plausible either way for me. But, like I said, he texted me and then I went. To social media to look it up because that's how I always <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> that's what we verify do. news mm-hmm. right and I saw that and I was like dang like because it was in front of his store his I think he had the whole lot now he had the store and then he bought the other businesses mm-hmm. so I'm like what a way to go and then when you look at their um, pictures and everything mm-hmm. that's where they did their photo shoot for the GQ mm-hmm. they did it in their city in their neighborhood on Slauson and that's where he died yeah so I'm like what you know that was a horrible message with that I was sad like I grew up with I'm like dang that's crazy yeah That's how I felt too. I mean, I was actually, unfortunately, the first place I saw it was on T-Tenders, which is one of the blogs that I follow, which is a guilty pleasure. But I was just scrolling and I saw it and the girl Liv, who Mm -hmm. runs that page, she had posted that this is what she heard and she hopes it wasn't true. Right. And literally three minutes later is when I saw it on a couple other blogs and then um, me and Alan went out to eat. And then he just looked up from his phone and just shook his head. And I was like, what? And he was basically saying he he, died. he, had, he had passed away. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I don't know. I think it hit me hard because I am a Lauren London fan. Mm-hmm. And it's like just when you either have a black son, a black father, mm-hmm. a black brother, a black boyfriend or husband, <laughs> any black man who is tied to your life in an intimate way, it is extremely hurtful. Mm -hmm. When you see another woman, another mother, another sister lose that black man. Mm -hmm. And so that was like how it hit me. It was just like, damn. And this was one that was doing something so positive in his community. So Mm -hmm. I don't follow him from my personal page. I followed him from one of my business pages because he was such a motivational person. Mm -hmm. And it's a Mm -hmm. page that I follow nothing but motivation. And it just hurt me thinking about how that girl, Lauren London, must feel. And now having to raise her son 
fatherless, Mm -hmm. which is is horrible. And Mm -hmm. it's like they're young. So that was that's why it just hit me. And I was just like, okay, I'm done with social media Mm -hmm. for the day because Mm -hmm. it's like I don't like to see negativity and tragedy. I don't watch the news. I don't Mm -hmm. subscribe to any things that are just negative all the time. I don't even engage. Yeah. So just to constantly see that up my timeline for mm-hmm. a whole day, it was way too much for me yeah. emotionally. And I just had to, I unfollowed the shade room because I had an attitude <laughs> with them. <laughs> now, I know that's petty, but yes, it not, it's not like it's their fault. <laughs> but I was just like, I'm done. They reporting news. They report, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> and it was like, every time I opened Instagram, shade room was the first thing at the top of my feed. Mm. And it was about it definitely him. definitely was. And I was just like, girl, I can't. I had gotten so engrossed with it that I had it. I told you I only had social media on one of my phones mm-hmm. so I don't get carried away. I had to just leave the phone behind because I was doing all of this, like looking this up and looking yep. this up and looking that up. I was like, okay, you're done. Yep. Please take a break. Yeah. <laughs> and you would have really thought it was like my brother yep. because I was so into it. And I think it's like you said, when you're fans of someone, you mm-hmm. know, and you're like, dang, how I wonder how she feels. I would feel like this. I would feel horrible. Yep. That's so horrible to have to be in the public like that. Yep. Even though I, I always had to remind myself, this is a life that people chose not getting killed, but as far as being famous yeah. and your life being public. public yep. And I just always feel like, oh, because we could go through that and nobody would know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We wouldn't be on blogs or whatever and yep. we would be able to mourn. Because when it got carried away, when they were putting a video out there, the video of him being oh, shot. Oh, that was terrible. Yes. And I'm just like, he has family. Right. Aside from his fiance and his son, he has another daughter, mm-hmm. you know, siblings, exactly. parents, a grandparents. Mother, exactly. You know what I mean? And it's just like, if that's the first thing you see, if you go on social media, you don't want to see that. Exactly. I know me, I wouldn't want to see my boyfriend, my fiance getting shot, everybody mm-hmm. Posting it and or even like the video of her coming in the hospital, mm-hmm. the video of that. What made you say I'm gonna record her coming in the hospital right. to find out that? Because at that point she didn't even know he was dead. Right. So to find out that your fiance or she said husband, so I'm gonna give it to her. Your husband passed away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you're being recorded, basically coming to get that news. That was insensitive. That's when I really was like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. I I think that social media has made people insensitive. It's like there's a normalization of watching tragedy and watching horror. And because now it's like people are so desensitized to it. And it's like a clout thing. Like, Mm -hmm. ooh, I got this video of, yeah. And, And I think because of, our generation, like how old we are, we lived real lives before social yeah. media. So mm-hmm. we have a different respect for how yeah. things are done and just the things that you should and shouldn't do and things that it's like, hey, that's too soon. Mm-hmm. Just like the whole Kodak Black. I don't know mm-hmm. if you've seen, I think that happened yesterday. Now I want to say <laughs> about Kodak Black, y'all, I could not tell you one song, one name of an album. I have no idea what he sings. Where he's from. I know, like one song. You do? Mm-hmm. See, I don't. I'm not a fan. I don't. The only thing I know of him is just from him being in blogs. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about Kodak Black. No disrespect to the young man. My son doesn't listen to his music. So usually if Andre don't listen to the music, mm-hmm. I don't know anything about the young, you know, generation mm-hmm. of rap. But I do know he's a younger guy. Mm-hmm. And he went on live yesterday and um, made some comments about if he were to push up on Lauren London, right? Mm-hmm. And it, he was saying she's a beautiful girl. And if he were to come at her, he would come at her a certain way, but she would have to mourn for over a year because of the passing of Nipsey and some of the rappers of the older generation, of our generation, mm-hmm. I would say, kind of went ham on him and made videos. And then they posted their no, videos. they made videos. Yeah, they posted <laughs> their videos. So T.I. posted a video. The Game posted a video. I think Tank posted a video as well. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why Tank. Like Tank, go sit down. You're not even a rapper. You sing. I don't know if Stay we, your lane, yes. Tank. <laughs> You're not a tough dude. You're not thugging. You're not about that life. Yes. <laughs> but he um, tries. he did try. <laughs> but they did. They had made videos basically where they were just coming at Kodak. Ti and the game came at him strong, mm-hmm. and then Tank came at him 
gentler, <laughs> which isn't a funny. He came the R and B way, right? <laughs> the stereotype. He's an R and B singer, so <laughs> he said it in a very singy way, <laughs> and they came at him like, "Look, motherfucker," yeah. <laughs> you know. But that sounds about about right. Mm-hmm. Ti and the game, they are the ones mm-hmm. that there. <laughs> and- yeah, they wasn't having it, and they pretty mm-hmm. much told Kodak like, "Apologize now." Mm-hmm. Just younger generation just doesn't have any respect. And you know and- what? Mm-hmm. To think about it. I think the game and Nipsey Hussle were close. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they're from the same area. In L.A. In L.A., mm-hmm. yeah. And then T.I. and Lauren London, they mm-hmm. work together. So Aren't they filming ATL, too? That's what he said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that prob- they probably really came at a real personal right. level. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if they came at anybody for anything because that's what they mm-hmm. do. T.I. and the whole Gucci but that was thing personal, and everything. Sure. That was more personal yeah. for both of them. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think so, too. Mm-hmm. Because it's, I feel like... I would have reacted the same way, Mm -hmm. you know. Now, I will say the shade room is the culprit, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. of that whole Kodak Black comment because they just took a snippet of something that he said on a live video. Mm -hmm. And I went and I watched the whole live because in my mind, I'm thinking like, I know this younger generation sometimes just, they don't say all the right things. They don't understand the code of ethics, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, as far as human behavior and moral conduct and just respecting people. Mm -hmm. So... I just found it hard to believe that he would be coming like that over this woman who just lost her man. Mm -hmm. And so I went and I listened to the whole video. And I will say that I do think they blew what he said out of proportion. Mm -hmm. I think if you would have heard the whole live and what he said before and after the Mm -hmm. comment they posted, it wouldn't have been taken so harshly. Right. Now, should he have said it? No, it's too soon. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's too tender. Way too soon. The man had only been gone for six days and Mm -hmm. everybody still raw about mm-hmm. it so like emotions are raw so I definitely don't think he should have said it but I also don't think that he really was being disrespectful right he was saying in his own immature thugged <laughs> out way that she's a beautiful girl mm-hmm. and she needs time before mm-hmm. he would even try to talk to her mm-hmm. but it is out of it's just not the right time it's too right. soon right so that leads me to talk about like the shade rum and how I feel like sometimes Gossip blogs, because they're trying to create conversation and they're trying to generate more comments and they're trying to get people talking about their content. Because if y'all don't know, that's how Instagram works. The more comments you get, the more likes you get, the more people Instagram's algorithm will allow to see your content. Mm -hmm. So what people do is now they just try to create content that is discussion worthy, that gets people up in arms. For example, I've seen the shade rum post pictures of people's children that may not be the cutest pictures of right. them. Now, you have seen 15 pictures of this but goddamn this baby, one. but mm-hmm. you picked the one that people are going to say something about. And I feel like when the Shade Room does that, they are perpetuating the problem mm-hmm. that creates the violence, which is why we lost a person like Nipsey Hussle to yeah, begin right. with. So, mm-hmm. you know, you say, rest in heaven, this is so sad, stop the violence. And you say all of those things, but you know that our black people have tempers. <laughs> like, we all know this. We all know how we are. Mm-hmm. Like, we as a culture, we know our <clears throat> own people. Mm-hmm. We know what gets us each other up in arms. We know what not to say. We know what not to do to be disrespectful and to get people riled up. Mm-hmm. So to me, for you to purposely carve out a 20 to 30 second piece of his conversation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And put that on your platform for people to get riled up about when you know that the whole black community right now is super sensitive about the fact that Nipsey Hussle just passed. Why do that? Mm -hmm. And then get a person like T.I. and a person like The Game all riled up. Like, why? Why? Yeah, right. Exactly. Now they talking about pull up. I'm in this town, and it's like, okay, but isn't this the same yeah. thing we just yeah what we're crying about mm-hmm. today? So I didn't refollow <laughs> the shape room, and I won't be because that pissed me off. And it's like there's too many black women crying tears and losing their sons and losing their brothers and their uncles mm-hmm. and you know and their husbands and boyfriends because of black on black violence because mm-hmm. black people sometimes can be too fucking cowardly yes. to have an altercation Say or an argument again. or whatever it's like the first thing you want to do is take somebody's life mm-hmm. well yeah you're not hurting the person who's dead cuz mm-hmm. he's gone mm-hmm. you hurt his family you hurt his children and you hurt the people around him who love him his mother yes. right so them people ain't do shit to you yes you mad with him go cut his leg or something <laughs> <laughs> i mean just go get in yeah. a fight with him right yeah. go punch him in his face and bust his lip mm-hmm. but to take him out 
is not hurting him because yeah. he's, he's no longer, he's gone. He's not in pain. Mm. Hell, for all we know, he's up in heaven mm-hmm. <laughs> having a blast at this right. point, right? So you leave the aftermath for all of the people who love him and now to have to fend for themselves without their king, mm-hmm. right? And that's a major problem in the black community yes, it as it is. And so for the shade room to perpetuate that, it really pissed me off. Mm. And I'm like, y'all have a, a huge platform, 15 million followers. Yeah. And this is what you do with your platform. Mm -hmm. It was just, it's like y'all saying, don't be disrespectful and Kodak being disrespectful. But y'all know what the clickbait is going to do. And y'all know exactly what to post. So you're literally using your black people and you're using our tempers and you're Mm -hmm. using our pain and you're using our anger to help grow your business. Exactly. And that I don't respect. That indeed. You're right. I don't. So that really pissed me off. Mm-hmm. So I unfollowed them. I'd unfollowed them already. Mm-hmm. But then I decided, you know what? I ain't refollowing them. <laughs> Fuck them. Because I had an attitude. Because it really pissed me off. Yeah. It's like, really? I mean, who would have even seen what he said other than his little followers exactly. had y'all not gave, given mm-hmm. it a platform? Mm-hmm. So it just really pissed me off. But at any rate. <laughs> so how do we feel, y'all? How do we feel about just following the blogs? And because I, when you look at it, it's really us. Who are keeping them, keeping them going in business? Yeah, you're right. I was following a lot of blogs at one point, mm-hmm. and I had unfollowed a lot of them just because I was I knew I was doing too much. Mm-hmm. And it is a way for you to have the news, not even just like gossip. Like mm-hmm. you get news from from them, but a lot of things like when you you have to think about it, a lot of things are coming from their personal viewpoint. Right. And even the things that they, like you said, choose to share. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference in some blogs and see what level the people that run this are on or the people that run that are on. I think if you just don't get consumed with them, Mm -hmm. you could be all right. But it's extremely easy Mm -hmm. to become consumed. And I know because I was consumed with this whole uh, Nipsey Hussle thing. I mean, I was reading everything. And one thing that irritated me was everyone posting their opinion and saying, oh, y'all sound ignorant. Like, a lot of you just really sound ignorant. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it has to be this. Oh, well, it has to be... Some things just, to me... You mean as far as how he he died? Yes, Mm -hmm. Like, y'all don't know. Right. We Nobody knows. Nobody knows. (laughs) Right. Now, like I said, for me, it's plausible either way. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But then people started posting pictures with him and a group of people circling a man that did not look like the man that they yeah, arrested that. saying um it be the people closest to you mm-hmm. and then dl body, really posted that oh, and it wasn't i, was, I would the same so person. disappointed it's not the same yeah. person mm-hmm. and i was like all of you people blind or you're just looking for something to post and his bodyguard posted a picture his bodyguard that was basically like i'm retiring after this mm-hmm. because nipsey gave him the day off that day mm-hmm. or told him go be with your family or whatever he didn't even know he was going out is what he said and he posted that picture. He was like, everybody in this picture is family. Like, get y'all facts straight. Right. He posted that himself. Get y'all facts straight. And all y'all sitting up there circling some miscellaneous man could get him shot. Like, now y'all doing too much. It was another post that I, that irritated me. I can't really remember what it was. but And then Lil Duval posted, how do y'all feel when y'all post this fake news? Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Like, don't you feel stupid? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's how I felt. Like, y'all don't feel stupid. I felt like everybody that had that picture on their page needed to go and delete it mm-hmm. because you're wrong. Yep. And that's dumb. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. And unfortunately, the first place I saw it, like I said, was DL Hewley's page. <laughs> and I blew, you know, I, I blew it up. And it I was, was like, just this like, don't look like. And I'm looking, I'm like, this is, this doesn't make sense, right? Because now listen, me and my friends, we're not Crips. Because... <laughs> 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 It, just in case you didn't, you guys didn't know, <laughs> when they say Nipsey Blue, they're referring to the fact that he was a Crip. Mm-hmm. He was in a gang. And so we're not Crips, we're not Bloods. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that no one could, like, no one in our group could, like, shoot me <laughs> or shoot you. <laughs> and it's cool. Like, you know. With all the other Yeah, well, it, that's my point. Like, so all the other <laughs> friends know that one of the friends in the group just shot me or shot you mm-hmm. and all of us is just like oh yeah Simone <laughs> shot Tania like make it make sense and Tania's still walking the street I mean it's I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure and we're not even in a game right right so I'm sure that that is not what really happened yeah and then there was a story about 
the guy who did shoot him had just gotten out of jail two days ago. Mm -hmm. And that they, you know, they're calling him a police informant and they feel like that the police or the government hired him Mm -hmm. to shoot Nip or whatever the case may be. Here's the thing. I said this about the whole Jesse Smollett thing. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. It's all speculation on our side. Mm -hmm. We can look at what makes sense. Makes sense, right. We can look at where the facts lead to. We can look at, what do they call it? I can't think of the word. Consequence. What is the word? Circumstantial. Mm -hmm. We can look at circumstantial evidence that leads us to believe. Right, but that can't get you unconvicted in the court of law. Well, it actually (laughs) can, unfortunately. Really? Yeah, I've been watching. That's the other time waster I've been doing is I've been addicted to these Netflix documentaries. Uh-huh. We wanted to talk about that on another episode okay. because it most of the cases that make documentaries are cases that are based off of circumstantial mm-hmm. evidence. It's not fact. It's just okay. circumstances leading up to, oh, this should this could have happened. Mm-hmm. And people really get convicted mm-hmm. and be life sentences. It's one about this guy from Baltimore. Look it up if you have time. It just came on HBO, the case of I a non Saeed. He's from okay. Baltimore. I did see like previews or something mm-hmm. like that for that. And I, I was like, I heard Baltimore and I was like, what? And as soon as I saw the Baltimore police car, I was like, <laughs> why do we always have to make the news? Right? <laughs> Golly. But it was very interesting. It's a four part. I know we off topic y'all. Sorry, but this is what Queen Conversation is all about. <laughs> but it's a four part like episode or whatever. And it's just about this guy who was connected, literally, he got a life sentence in Baltimore mm-hmm. for killing a girl. And it was all circumstantial. They had no DNA evidence tied to mm. him to the murder, the murder victim, right? Mm-hmm. None, zero, all wow. circumstantial. So it is, it is unfortunate that we allow circumstances to point us in the direction because if that's not what happened, then it's really unfair to pin that on Mm -hmm. the government if the Mm -hmm. government really didn't do it. It's unfair to pin it on the police department if they really didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know. So like (sighs) with the Jesse thing, I literally watched everybody talk. Some people was on one side of the Mm -hmm. fence, other people was on the other side of the fence, and I didn't comment at all because I don't know what the hell is true. Because you know... It's plausible either way. Exactly. That's what I keep saying. Like, if now, if it's something that you can just rule out, like, no, that absolutely didn't happen. Right. But in both of these cases, it can make sense yeah, either it way. Could happen. Because everybody with Nipsey, everybody was saying he came to the store and Nipsey said, oh, basically, and they always say respectfully, like, they, you can't come in or whatever, you're a snitch or whatever. His partner, when they interviewed him, I didn't see him say any of that. He right. said the guy came up and spoke or whatever. They spoke. They got their food. The guy got a burger. He said that he went in the building with his food. Basically, it sounded like they everybody got food around the same time. Right. He went inside the building with his food. And like a couple of minutes later, the guy came back and started shooting. Like he was like, he had just walked off mm-hmm. basically. So I'm like. Did that happen or, you know what I mean? And everybody was doing all this speculating. And it's like, you know, people were there, right? Mm -hmm. You know, there were actual witnesses. Mm -hmm. like Yeah, people that were staying next to him that got shot too. They got shot too. And then I saw a post, somebody posted one of the guys that got shot and was like, you know, it has to be hard for your family when like basically you're a non-fact. They just said... Other people got shot, but you know what I mean? Right. So it's like his, right. like Nipsey overshadowed all of that. And it's like, your family don't see anything about you. Right. I hope you get better. Did another one die or? I don't know. I don't either. Yeah. So just, you... They said like three people got shot. Mm-hmm. Yep. I just know naturally it was, you could tell it was meant for Nipsey. He died, right. you know, but. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate. And like I said, there's no way to know really what happened. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. all we can do is speculate. And I just don't think people should base an opinion off of speculation and make mm-hmm. it fact. Like, mm-hmm. this is what happened. Well, you don't know yeah, what that's happened. What I put up a post and then somebody commented. Because I put up a post and I just said, hey, I saw this movie, White Boy Rick. And in that movie, the police paid him mm-hmm. to sell drugs. Mm-hmm. And then he got caught up in the selling drugs. And then he they paid him to go back out and get more infamous people right. that they basically wanted. And then he ended up in doing jail. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He had a life sentence. I think he actually did 30 years. Mm-hmm. So somebody commented and was like, oh, you believe the government did it? I said, what I'm saying is it's plausible either way. Right. It could have just been some hating person that wanted to look like somebody and, and kill somebody. Mm-hmm. But it could have been, if you things in history... <laughs> 
you know, things happen. Yep. It could have been this way. It could have been that way. I'm not here to say it's definitely this. Right. Because you don't know. Yeah. It's like when Selena, which I thought was very interesting that they died on the same exact yeah. day. Wasn't that interesting? Yeah. And it's like, okay, so the woman who killed her was like a fan. Mm-hmm. So it's not always hate. Sometimes it's jealousy. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's envy. Sometimes it's just obsession. Mm-hmm. Like you have no idea what drives people to kill other people. I've even watched documentaries of people saying that they killed somebody so that they could be famous, like you said, mm-hmm. so that they their name could go down in history. So you just don't know why it happened. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes people with large platforms should not like perpetuate those agendas because mm-hmm. again, you don't know if it's true. Yeah. So don't get people to think in a certain way. I mean, unfortunately, black people already have to live in fear. So to create more fear or to make more black people feel like the reason that he passes because he was doing the Dr. Sabi documentary, Mm -hmm. which could be true, but we don't know. Right. right? And the thing that makes me feel like, well, there weren't even all there was was discussions that he was doing it. There's no like clips that I was able to find of the documentary. There's no advertising mm-hmm. of it. There's no marketing of it. Yeah, it's not. He said it. Yeah, he said it in an interview. Yeah, I didn't see me either. Yeah, I guess we'll know if something happens to Nick Cannon at this point. Exactly. Because he said he was going to pick up where he left off. Right. But I had a, a conversation while I was getting my nails done, and I felt like if that was a controversial issue, mm-hmm. and it's something that you were going to do. Do you have to say it right. in advance? Right. Like, even in, in Nipsey's case. You, Just do it. Because in my mind, Beyonce put out a whole secret album. She had people work with her on that album. She mm-hmm. had people in the studio. She did a whole visual. All of this happened before we knew anything, mm-hmm. and then bam, an album. So could you have just put out this documentary? Well, you know, they say that there's this quote, and I've recently learned it. And not I've seen it for probably 10 years, but I think... It really set in mm-hmm. maybe about a year ago. You have to work in silence. Yeah. You have to stop making announcements. I don't care if, like, when I first started the podcast, mm-hmm. I didn't tell anybody mm-hmm. that I was starting a podcast. Mm-hmm. It's like you knew when mm-hmm. I posted it and said, Yep, hey, it's launching mm-hmm. tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you just have to play your cards close yeah. to your chest because you don't know who is out there. And, and listen, I ain't nobody. I'm not mm-hmm. saying anybody out there trying to stop my grind or stop my bag, but you do have people who wish negative yes. on you. I, yes. it, I don't. You could be at the smallest level and you have people who hate on you. You know, it could be a peer of yours who y'all in the same industry and y'all mm-hmm. from the same city and both of y'all starting the same thing. You just doing one thing and sh- this mm-hmm. person is doing another. And even though neither one of you have made money or have mm-hmm. no notoriety, this person could be silently hating on you. Yep. Thinking that you doing what they're doing is going to take something out of your pocket or their mm-hmm. pocket. So you never know like how people feel and like what verbal curses they're placing over your life. Because, mm-hmm. you know, words are curses. If mm-hmm. some of y'all queens didn't know, literally you can speak curses, but that's why you have to stay out of certain energies. But the thing about it is you have to play your cards close mm-hmm. to your chest. It's funny because like after all of the whole aftermath math with Nipsey, I was talking to my husband, I was talking to my brother, I was talking to my son and I said, you know, why do black men have this thing where y'all have to reconnect with your hood? Mm-hmm. Like once you get yourself to a point where you're out of it and you made it out alive, right? Because half of y'all don't. Mm-hmm. But if you make it out alive, what is it about the hood that y'all are so tied to? And I know I'm going to get some negative comments mm-hmm. from saying this because people going to say, oh, don't forget where you came from. And black men have to stand up. And I, I get all of that. But you don't have to stand up inside the hood to help the hood. You can you give can... back without going back. Right. You don't have to exactly. be so real and so down. Exactly. Because... They tell you coming up, the streets don't love you. Yep. does not change because you made more money. Right. And unfortunately, it doesn't change even when you give back. Mm-hmm. It makes you a target, in my opinion. Yeah, it mm-hmm. does. That's a sad thing because yep. it that should that's what should happen. Mm-hmm. It should love you for giving back. Mm-hmm. It should raise you up yep. to be what you become. And you should be able to go back and help those other little boys. You just got to help them from a distance. That's exactly. And that's how I see it. And I think from a woman's perspective, mm-hmm. we see it that way. Mm-hmm. Like, unfortunately, you can't stay there. Mm-hmm. So, excuse me. So you made a point that Nipsey Hussle's bodyguard said he had given him the day off or whatever the case may be. And here's one of the things I question is Nipsey wasn't just coming up. Mm-hmm. I mean, he'd been rapping for 15 years, mm-hmm. right? So he's well known. Mm-hmm. 
nationally, mm-hmm. <laughs> first of all. And then, of course, if you're well-known nationally, you got to understand that you're super well-known in your hood. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as, like, I guess, kind of where Lil Scooter was going yeah. to Baltimore. And he died right in, in Baltimore. Baltimore streets, mm-hmm. right? So while I'm going to say probably 80% of the people from your hood do look up to you and you are a hero to them and you do give them hope and make them feel like, you know what, hooping and playing ball Mm -hmm. and hustling isn't the only way out. There's other things that we can do and we really can make it out the hood. But I think once you reach a certain level of success, I don't think that it's safe for you to think that you can walk around your own hood especially just standing outside your store, leaning up against a car, mm-hmm. talking to friends. Like, why are people able to get that close to you mm-hmm. at that, like, you've reached that level of success? It's not about the money, but it's about the success, the notoriety, mm-hmm. you know, what you stand for. You want, People can see on, on social media the stages that you on. They can see, like, what you're you wearing, change, you doing all mm-hmm. this, you driving a Maserati, you just bought a Rolls Royce, this, that, and the fourth. And it's like, these people who are looking at you and they seeing this level of success, and then they can just roll right up to your store. And you can you can be there in the parking exactly. lot. Exactly. Yeah. I think that as far as our black men, like they have to be more mindful mm-hmm. and be more careful and understand that while it is the right thing to do, it is what Malcolm X was trying to do, it mm-hmm. is what Martin Luther King was trying to do, and so many others. Mm-hmm. I get it. But a lot of times it's your own people, right? Because the 20% of mm-hmm. the people are the people who don't want to see you succeed because it makes them feel insecure and it, it makes them feel like, well, damn, I'm a loser and they mm-hmm. hate on you. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. You know, and so I said that, you now my son, he don't know nothing about the hood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even though for periods of time we lived in the hood, he didn't grow up in it, so right. he don't know nothing about it. And you know, my brother is really from New Jersey, so he don't mm-hmm. know nothing either. <laughs> the only person who could relate was Alan, was my husband. I was just like, what, what is that? Because even he sometimes will be in a car. He'd be like, babe, I'm going to just drive through the hood real quick because he's from Murphy Homes. And I'd be looking at him like, you a grown ass man. Like, why are we doing this? I don't, listen, I'm not scared of the hood mm-hmm. at all. I grew up in the hood, so it ain't nothing for me. Like, mm-hmm. it's like home, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm-hmm. is I don't look over my shoulder. I don't feel right. nervous. I don't, listen, I mean, it ain't no punk bitch either. So <laughs> I ain't walking around like I'm nervous about yeah. being there. But why are we driving through Murphy Homes that doesn't even exist because <laughs> right, they blew them up say. 20 years ago? Like, why are just we... just want to ride through there But that's what he does. He rides through and then he'll see somebody he know. When, mm. My question, you went to high school with him? Yeah, we went to school together. <laughs> why is he standing outside? Like, what do y'all do? I mean, mm. What is this lifestyle that mm. you're just standing outside talking? Mm. And I think for women, and maybe just us, Right, because of the way we were raised, but like we wouldn't, you would never catch us standing outside, no. just having a conversation. I know it's weird. Yeah, why are we standing outside? <laughs> exactly. We can go to each why? other's house. Exactly. We can go inside we can wherever go we're inside. standing outside. Yeah. Of. We're not just going to be. We're not just standing up and outside. Staying outside. But yeah. like it's weird, and I'm like, you want to go through the hood, oh, and they then love it. you see somebody you know, and he pull over, and like I'm in the car, and he pull over, and they you know gave each other five, oh blah blah blah, and they talking, and I'm like, what is this? Like <laughs> that is a thing. When I get to work, <laughs> you know, I work in the hood. Yeah. And on a warm day. They all standing outside. That's what I think, and <laughs> these men older than me. I know. They grown. They, yeah, they just and like they having to be, a good time. Yes, and it's like this is not mm-hmm. something it's to like do. Even y'all. if you ride by, you stop, you see people outside, you get out, you go outside with them. Like that's what they want to do. I know. So here's what Alan told me about that. Because I asked him, I said, mm-hmm. what is that? Like, why do y'all do that? And at 40, because he's 40, <laughs> why do you still do it? And he, he had to think about it because he was like, um, I never thought about it, but you're right. Why mm-hmm. do you do that? And I said, why? And he thought about it. And he was like, because when I was little, that's all they tell you is like, yo, you know, never forget where you came from. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I think that that is like beat into your head so much that you literally have a loyalty mm-hmm. to your hood. And it's like, he even got a tattoo on his arm of mm-hmm. Murphy Holmes. And I'm like, yo, I would, what is this? Like, grow up. I mean, it's old, <laughs> right? But it's like, when you think about it from the man's perspective, because again, if you wasn't a hood chick, I mm-hmm. know that sound bad, y'all. I don't mean it in a bad way. I'm just mm-hmm. saying it as like some women were raised where they were outside and in the mix all the time and we weren't Mm -hmm. even though I grew up in it I just I didn't get to be outside Mm -hmm. I had to be in the house Mm -hmm. so if that's how you grew up and the hood got a hold of you meaning the hood raised you kind of 
then that's probably what you were told is, oh, be loyal to your hood. Don't mm-hmm. forget where you came from. Come back to your hood. And and I told Alan, I said, babe, I'm kind of glad we had this conversation because now you at least get to see that this mm-hmm. is something that was planted in your head and it's not safe. Mm-hmm. It's not safe. And it's not normal. Really, it's not. I don't go back it's through. For them, but, yeah. <laughs> it is for them, but it's... It's not healthy. Mm-hmm. If you want to inspire, because let's be clear, y'all ain't going to inspire nobody. Y'all just going to talk and hang out, right? And say <laughs> hi. Yeah. But even if you really were doing it to inspire, I think we have to learn a different way mm-hmm. to inspire mm-hmm. and to give back and to create a platform where our kings who really are out there putting in for their community, we have to create a, a way for them to not be touchable Yeah, when they're doing that. Because I am such a loyal person. I'm loyal to a fault. And loyalty is like big for me. Like mm-hmm. I like it. I, like most people cry during breakups and things like that as far as like watching movies and things. Mm-hmm. Me, if it's like a friendship and a loyalty, I got tears in my eyes. I'm like, oh, they so lo-. Like that's mm-hmm. my thing. So I do admire like... Nipsey Hussle for being loyal to his hood. You came and you bought business to right. your hood. Mm-hmm. You bought the businesses. He did an interview and he said something like the guy that owned like the burger shop or whatever took all the chairs from outside because he didn't want them sitting outside. And he was like, okay. Like he thought that was fucked up. Mm-hmm. Then he was like, okay. Then what, now we bought the store. Now he pays us rent. Mm-hmm. And I do like that you did those things. I think they said, this is again what they said. I do not know. His partner that was there didn't say it. The witnesses didn't say it. People are saying he was there to meet somebody that just got out of jail to get him some clothes. Mm -hmm. That's great. I feel like he could have made a phone call. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you, and nobody knew he was going there. So it was just like, probably he got a phone call. Like, all right, well, I'm I'm around there. Exactly. You could tell he wasn't dressed to be out. Like, he still had the do rag on. Mm -hmm. He didn't have any of his chains on. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't on some, I'm going out. It probably was just a store, a quick little run. Right. But I just feel like, like you said, we just have to be a little smarter and just realize that rea- it's fucked up. Yes, it is. And you shouldn't have to do yes. it. Right. Yeah. But the reality yep. is, this is what it is. Yep. So you just have to move carefully. Mm-hmm. You can give back. Jay-Z and Beyonce give back all the time. I don't see pictures of Jay-Z. Exactly. On that bench, I took a picture of um, in Marcy Project. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, you I- don't see him just <clears throat> hanging out at Marcy. Yeah. And even if he do own businesses, which I'm sure he does, mm-hmm. but even if he does, you don't see him out there chilling. Yeah. It just walking around. Listen, yeah. sometimes, and I know we we like to stay humble, and but you have to recognize when your glow up has glowed the fuck mm-hmm. up, and you're not on the same level anymore mm-hmm. as some of the people that's still in your hood, and you may love them and you know care for them and want them to do better, but you do have to recognize your own greatness. Mm-hmm. Like like he has said, um, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. Yeah, meaning Ermias. Yeah, or May or It's E R M I A S. And um, they said, and I didn't verify this. I'm just repeating what I what he wrote. Actually, is one of his captions that it means the God in me or something mm-hmm. to that effect. And right, mm-hmm. like if that's who you are, if that's what you were manifested as on this earth, right, is to be a blessing to. And he was. He mm-hmm. clearly did that, right, because mm-hmm. his death has completely shook mm-hmm. the community. Mm-hmm. So clearly, he definitely made a huge impact. But if you know that you're not normal, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, you know that there's a different light in you that God has placed in you in your life to carry out a certain mission. Mm-hmm. You ain't qualified to just be rolling around in these streets like an everyday average person mm-hmm. because you're because not. Because you're not. And I, I think that's the only thing I'm saying. Not that people shouldn't give back or anything like that. So don't y'all be coming, cutting my goddamn head off because I know y'all hear what y'all <laughs> want to hear. But that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that... Some people just have to know who you are. And I think when you are blessed and you know that there's a, a light in you, you know that mm-hmm. you're not like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Like like people who are special. And I do believe that there are just some, some people who people, are yeah. special. They have special gift. They're just not of the average nature. Mm-hmm. You know you might. So mm-hmm. don't move like you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you know that you're a godly being, then mm-hmm. move like you mm-hmm. are a godly being. You know, don't move like you're normal. Mm -hmm. So it's sad that we even have to have that conversation Mm -hmm. though. And and it's sad that we have to tell our black men, yeah, when you make it out your hood, go Mm -hmm. and just try to help them from afar. Mm Because really they, what they need is for you to be present. They really do need, they need for you to be there. But the problem is 80% of, of them 
will take what you're giving and they'll be inspired by it and they'll be motivated. But then you have that small percentage who won't. Yeah. And unfortunately, they can cause your demise. <laughs> and now you're not here to do your work. You're not here anymore mm-hmm. to do whatever else you were doing. And the last thing I wanted to say is I hope that our African-American culture <laughs> can stop giving people their flowers when they die. Yes. Because you ain't here all this talk. Yes. Now, I knew who Nipsey was. Mm-hmm. I knew he was doing the documentary. Mm-hmm. I knew of him. I did actually listen to his album. I didn't, I'm not saying I was bumping it mm-hmm. every day, but I've heard his whole mm-hmm. album before. And so I knew of him and I knew what he was doing mm-hmm. in his community. But now everybody is putting him on this platform. And it's like, if this man was doing the great work that he was doing that everybody's talking about, then why wasn't y'all talking about that when mm-hmm. he was alive? Mm-hmm. Why wasn't y'all... I, I literally scrolled up and down his whole entire page. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was obsessed like yeah. you were. Mm-hmm. I scrolled up and down his entire Instagram page and there were a couple rappers that stood out and a couple other black men that stood out that have large platforms mm-hmm. as well that you can tell he was closely knitted mm-hmm. to. But... A lot of y'all wasn't. You go on some of the other pages of the people who bigging him up now and yeah. talking about how great he is. You never stay, see them posting mm-hmm. him or bigging him up or giving him a part of their platform. You don't mm-hmm. see that. You see him with a certain group of people. Mm-hmm. I think Meek Mill was a big one that you saw mm-hmm. on his page. YG. YG was a big one you saw on his page. DJ Khaled, he just had mm-hmm. did an album with. Mm-hmm. You saw a couple of posts on his page. You saw Jay-Z, Jay-Z on his, yeah. his page. So you saw some people on his page and he was basically saying, like, I was working with this person mm-hmm. and did this and did that. Mm-hmm. But then it's like all these other black men and black women who have large platforms. Mm-hmm. You may post one picture until that man died exactly. of the great work that he was doing. So if he was doing such great work, why didn't you utilize your platform then Then, mm-hmm. while he was doing it mm-hmm. to say, hey, this man did this or did that or is doing this and doing that. Mm-hmm. Let's go support this man. But you didn't say that. But mm-hmm. now you want to post pictures of him and talk about his great work in mm-hmm. his demise and his death. That is another thing that I hope that as black people, we just mm-hmm. do differently. I say it all the time. We do not support one another. Yes. Wow. At yes. all. We yes. don't. We don't. Black people are bandwagoners. Black people yes. are sheep. And black people are clout chasers a lot of times. And I'm not saying all of us because it's not all. Mm-mm. But culturally, mm-hmm. that's how we are. So when somebody is hot, cool, on it, doing something, then everybody want to jump on. But when you see someone doing something great, A lot of times people don't post you. People don't big you up. People don't give Mm -hmm. you a bigger platform by utilizing their platform. I don't care how small it is. You have 200 Mm -hmm. followers. Well, Mm -hmm. that's 200 people that didn't know about it before. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that. We wait until it's cool. And everybody else is doing it. Yeah. We're followers. Right. Mm -hmm. And and that's why we hurt so much when we lose a leader Mm -hmm. like Nipsey because he wasn't a follower. Yes. And it's I just hope and I don't know how to fix that, but I really wish that we could do something about that. Because it's very annoying to watch. Cause I'm sitting here like, no, none of y'all was posting all this stuff about no goddamn Nipsey before. And fifty cents said it actually. He said it. Did you see his post? I saw what the comment to the to the person that said something like somebody said, "Did you know?" Did you post? Yeah, and he was like, "I'll post when I get ready." Yeah, he did make a post where he said, "You know, resting in heaven to Nipsey," and he was like, "And to all the people who really, really were his friends, I mm-hmm. send y'all my condolences." Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. all the rest of y'all is on some bullshit, yeah. basically. Yeah, and I felt exactly like that, yeah. and I'm like, people do that all the time. Yeah, it's too much. It's really too much. Like I said, if CJ wasn't on him. I knew him as mm-hmm. being with Lauren London right. because I I knew I liked Lauren London. Right. So if he wasn't paying attention to him, I wouldn't have been. So I ended up listening mm-hmm. to his music and things like that. But because of my boyfriend did, not because I just was like, I really like... And right. once he was telling me stuff, I was like, yeah, I really like him because, you know, I'm so into supporting black mm-hmm. and being loyal and all that stuff. And that's all the stuff that he was into. So right. it was like, oh yeah, I like him. That kind yep. of thing. But I can't say that I was, he wasn't Jay-Z to me. Right. And everybody yeah. that knows me knows how Jay-Z mm-hmm. is to me. So yeah, I told the kids I would have to deactivate my page if anything happened to him because I wouldn't be able to handle it right. like a child. Just because, you yeah. know, we are fans of people. You do feel like you know them. You do. Because you know so much about them. You know, you're reading about them. Yep. You're listening to them. You know about them. I could tell you about this man's childhood and we never shook hands. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. So people that were saying, y'all mourning, y'all don't know him. 
I thought that was ignorant. Like, pe- you can be a fan. You can mourn. Yeah. And my thing is, when I said I feel sorry for him, I, I feel sorry for his family, mm-hmm. I would feel those same people that saying, oh, y'all don't know him. You're my Facebook friend. I would feel sorry for your family. Right. If you were gunned down. Right. And your family had to see videos of that on the internet. I would feel sorry for your family. Mm-hmm. And we only Facebook friends. I don't know you either. Right. You know what I mean? And that's just how I felt about the people saying, oh, y'all, y'all doing too much. You one of them hating ass people sitting on the side. You want that attention? No, I don't. I mean, listen, I saw somebody that posted... And I'm not going to say it exactly how he said it, but he said, he was like, all these people saying that none of us was fans of Nipsey and now we jumping on a bandwagon. He was like, no, I'm not jumping on a bandwagon. I'm just a human being who's mourning mm-hmm. the death of another human being. Like that's what normal human beings do. Yeah. So yeah, of course mourn. My point was when people talk about his great work. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. That it's nothing wrong with it. Even spreading it now is a good thing. Mm-hmm. I just wish that we would stop waiting until, until the person gone. passed away mm-hmm. to jump on that bandwagon mm-hmm. of showing the great work they're doing. I just wish that we would do it while they are still yeah. doing it to like spread out that. Yeah, because I imagine that's how all far he would have come. You right. know, when he released that one album, I think it was selling it for a hundred dollars mm-hmm. it's either a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or something like that and then like jay-z kind of was like i see what you're doing so right. he bought like 10 copies of it or something like that mm-hmm. like most of us would have been like i'm not paying a hundred dollars for no goddamn album right but basically he was owning all of his own everything so right. he was doing it on his own and it's like i'm gonna just put it out there here, here you go yeah and it's like most people didn't know that until now right until he's gone like you said and it's like we could have been putting that out there then. Exactly. We could have been buying his exactly. album then. We could have been streaming Victory Lap before he was exactly. gone. Because I'm sure the sales went up exactly. for that. Yep. And a lot of people that didn't know who he was. And that album was Grammy nominated mm-hmm. this year. So people just started paying him some attention this year. And right. look how long he's been. Ex- that was That's yeah. my point is I just wish we would do better with mm-hmm. that. Listen, I don't tell. I would never tell people not to mourn. Oh, you mm-hmm. wasn't his friend. Don't mourn him. That's silly. I mean, Mm -hmm. people are going to mourn because you're human. Like, we tell people don't be desensitized. Right. You know, then you can't at the same time tell them that they can't mourn. So that's hypocritical, Mm -hmm. right? My point is simply, let's just start putting each other up on a good platform. Share our platform. All of us have a platform now. Mm -hmm. Everybody has social media pages. Mm -hmm. And we all have different followers. We may have some mutual friends, Mm -hmm. but we all have a completely different set of followers. So if I have a great message and I'm saying something wonderful, all I'm saying is don't wait until I die. Mm -hmm. If you know me and you know my words and you like what I'm saying, don't wait until I'm dead Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then be like, oh, yeah, that was my girl. (laughs) She was doing positive things. But you wasn't telling anybody that I was doing the positive things while I was doing the positive things. That's Mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Anybody can mourn. You can't tell people not to mourn. Even if they're doing it for clout, let the people do what they want. Let them, yeah, just ignore them. That's where I kind of keep it. It is what it is. Yeah, Yeah, but like I would never tell anybody that. I just didn't want you to misconstrue what I was saying. Like I'm saying, let's say, look, Simone is great at bartending. She does, she that. Let's use our play platforms mm-hmm. to promote you today because mm-hmm. it's what you're doing let's not wait until you gone and then be like oh yeah she was doing mm-hmm. good things it's like but then but you never said a word yeah, yeah that's my point yeah. it's like let's help each other while we're still here mm-hmm. and give each other that platform and be supportive so that the person can actually feel it while they're alive yeah. because all of this love that he's receiving now and people bigging up all of his great work in his community, I'm not saying that he didn't see it while he was alive. I'm pretty sure he did, but it wasn't, it like, wasn't this. like this. No, it wasn't not. <laughs> you know, so he never even got to experience the appreciation and the gratitude at this level mm-hmm. while he was alive. But it was the work that he did. So why should he have to go for people to recognize that mm-hmm. or want to share his message? Mm-hmm. That's my only point is I just wish we would do better with that because I see Mm. that happen a lot it was the same thing when the other young boy died Extension oh okay he had an album out now I didn't know I wasn't a fan I didn't know anything about him so I don't have the same I think tie to his death as I had to like you don't know his family like nothing yeah Yeah. I I thought it was sad because he was a a young person when he died everybody 
it went two ways. Some people were like, he was a bad person. He mm-hmm. ranked about this. He did this, this. I saw that. And then I saw and he was up and coming. And mm-hmm. I think he did some philanthropy. And But the one Kodak Black song that I know, mm-hmm. he's on it. Oh. <laughs> I, said, I know one song. <laughs> one song. <laughs> and then he was on right. that one song. And that was the only reason why I saw his name. Every time I saw him in the blogs, it was never really positive. Right. But I didn't know him. He was a young man, yeah. you know. Yeah, I didn't know nothing about him either, but... When he passed, everybody knew. everybody was talking about him. Then they were talking about all the wonderful things he did. And mm-hmm. it was the same exact mm-hmm. thing. And I was like, okay, so why is this being told now? But mm-hmm. when he was alive, nobody mm-hmm. did this. And I think he had just put an album out as well. Mm-hmm. And the album that he put out went platinum after he, after died, he died. Because now everybody's trying to go back and see mm-hmm. who he was. And mm-hmm. and I that's the only thing I wish. I mean, everybody should mourn because we are human. And mm-hmm. if somebody dies, it's sad. Mm-hmm. So anybody can mourn. But instead of us waiting for someone to pass... If we see their greatness, why can't we share? Yeah, share that their greatness because we would share if something happened to them, like yeah. not not them like dying, but you yeah. would, you would share something bad about exactly. them. Exactly, easy, and that's why I unfollow the shade room mm-hmm. and why I'm not following them again because I feel like the more I pay attention to how they report on mm-hmm. people, it's like y'all can bring to light all of the terrible things that black people do. There's this other rapper that Andre was telling me about. I'm not going to know his name. (laughs) But he's from Florida. He's a young guy. You might have because you got teenagers too. Mm -hmm. You might have heard about him. So supposedly he was just arrested for killing his best friend. And he supposedly has like two personalities or something like that, girl. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about it on the next episode because I'll do a little more Me digging. Me too. I'm going to look this one up. It's a very interesting story. And when, when my son told me about it, he literally called me from college to tell me this story. And mm-hmm. I was like, and as I'm listening to the story, I had to guide him because, you know, it's hard for them to, it's hard for the teenagers, unfortunately, to understand reality mm-hmm. as we know it, mm-hmm. right? And what they see on social media because they think everything on social media is real while I see social media as the replacement of television. Mm -hmm. That's how I see social media. When people say, well, people be living a lie on social media, they don't be their real lives. Why would it be? Mm -hmm. It's a virtual reality. It's Mm -hmm. just like television. It's like, when people have a business and you're like, oh, well, she don't really do this or do that. Well, it's a commercial. Mm-hmm. Why would you think it's real? That's your stupidity for thinking that what she's posting or what he's posting is actually real life. Yeah, I mean, it's just an ad. Mm-hmm. It's marketing, right? Mm-hmm. Now, some people use it for personal and some people use it for business, but it's your fault if you if, actually if you, believe yeah. that what this is is real, mm-hmm. right? So to me... I said to Andre, I said, look, son, because I had to do some research on it because he was upset about it. Mm -hmm. Like he's a fan of this young guy. So I did some research and I called him back and I said, look, son, this different, this, he's called multiple personalities. So what he did is he has named his second personality and given this personality a name. And what he does is he like Sasha Fierce and Beyonce, Mm -hmm. right? So how Beyonce says when she goes on stage, she's Sasha Fierce. Mm -hmm. But when she's just bubbling around, she's Beyonce. And Sasha Fierce is a different personality and she's confident Mm -hmm. and she's Mm -hmm. this and she's that. Well, the guy, young guy, I think he's like 19, he's saying the same thing. He's just not saying it the right way. Mm -hmm. He's portraying it as a schizophrenia, Mm -hmm. that he has this other personality named something, he named him, and that this personality is a killer, Like he's a murderer, but he is happy and smiley. So when you go to his social media, every picture of him, he's smiling, grinning from ear to ear. He looks like someone you would want to get to know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these younger rappers have a very interesting, rough look. But he is, he's smiling from ear to ear. He's always wearing colorful clothes and he's happy and this and that. And then there's some posts where he's talking about this alter ego, which Mm -hmm. is really his other personality because he's schizophrenic. And he made a song about it about a year ago where he's talking about how he killed his best friend in the song. But he's saying he didn't do it, that the, the other, other personality did, did it. Mm-hmm. So they had this huge thing on social media. And again, it's all the kids, the younger generation. And they were all talking about how, like, oh, my God, this is crazy. They, they were fascinated by the fact that his best friend really winded up dying a couple months ago. Oh, kind, Not like the song said. They, mm-hmm. He got shot in a drive-by. 
And so they like everybody on social media was making it this thing. Like he did it. It was his other personality because in that song he was talking about killing his friend. So of course Andre is calling me and he's like, "Ma, this is crazy." Like mm. he's telling me about it and I'm listening. And I told him, I said, "Let me look at his social media." And I told him, I called him back. I said, "Son, this is a marketing strategy. Mm-hmm. This That's boy what it is not like to me. schizophrenic." I said, "See, what y'all don't understand is y'all buy into this is real, and really it's just his marketing mm-hmm. is." this because it gets you guys talking. Yeah. I said, but the problem is when the marketing goes bad. <laughs> yeah. When right? Your, when your best friend really die. When you really like, die. Yeah. <laughs> now people looking like, wait a minute, you wrote this song that said, and they really did yeah. arrest him. Now they posted that on the shade room. Mm-hmm. They posted that he had gotten arrested on the shade room. Now what's funny about that, now that was after Andre had called me. So mm-hmm. then I was more familiar with it when I saw it. And I'm reading through the comments and people were really saying like, no, he didn't do it. Carl did it or whatever the alter ego <laughs> mm-hmm. name is. And I just shook my head and I said, this generation is so sad. Yeah. They can't, they really do not understand real versus virtual. Mm-hmm. They really think it's real life. And mm-hmm. I'm like, and, he, and this boy, he had posted on his social media once he had gotten arrested. And he was just like, look, y'all, I really didn't do this. You know, music is a form of entertainment. Mm-hmm. What I wrote about is not even a real story. It's just something that... I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, y'all really think that when people write music like Lemonade and Oh, He Was Cheating, that is not true. It's just entertainment. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with y'all? Do Mm y'all know people have writers? Listen, Jermaine Dupree wrote Usher's whole album, Confessions. Y'all thought Usher was talking talking about about him and Chili. Mm -hmm. It didn't even have Mm -hmm. nothing to do with Usher. Mm -hmm. He was just singing some shit somebody else wrote. Mm -hmm. But y'all take this shit too serious. was a writer wrote that for Beyonce and she was talking about like other writers. Right. And they made it about a real a relationship exactly. because Beyonce sang it. She was actually talking about how like other writers, like people wouldn't hire her or whatever. Mm-hmm. And they made it about a relationship. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. And so they literally turn art mm-hmm. because that's what it is. It's mm-hmm. art. And y'all turn art into reality and mm-hmm. it's not reality mm-hmm. and it's, it's so unfortunate that 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 happens so we really also have to be careful of this younger generation and I'm glad that my son feels comfortable enough to call me yeah. and say ma look mm-hmm. into the, this is crazy because in his mind it was real like mm-hmm. this is what really happened mm-hmm. and he it, it was freaky and scary mm-hmm. and he was just like so many people are suffering from all of these mental illnesses mm-hmm. and just to think that this could be real so I had to I said, look, son, <laughs> this, not it. This, is, this is just marketing, honey. Mm-hmm. It's just business. It mm-hmm. was just a way for him to push out his music. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's unfortunate that that happens. And I'm tying that back in. I know it's taking me a long time to get to the point. I'm sorry. And we about to wrap up. But I was tying that into what the Shade Room does because once I looked into that young man, he was actually a good young man. Mm-hmm. He was, I mean, he had been arrested twice before. But he had done well in school. He had kids who were looking up to him. Every Wednesday, this young man was going to different schools and he was reading mm. to the children in schools. And so, but y'all never posted that. Mm-hmm. It took for me to like go to his page and really, only because my son called me and was telling me mm-hmm. the story. But that's why I went and was like, well, I'm interested. Let me see what this is about. But all of these great things that he's doing in his community and all of these things that he's doing for his fan base mm-hmm. and y'all post when he gets, gets arrested. arrested. Mm-hmm. So to me, if the Shade Rum and some of the other black blogs out there are black people, why are we doing the same thing to each other mm-hmm. that we say all of the other journalistic outlets mm-hmm. or media pages do to us, but we do it to, to us ourselves. too. Mm-hmm. So I just don't respect that. And mm-hmm. I was just like, that's not cool. So Y'all ain't never post nothing else. But when it's a bad headline, to your point, you're going to post the bad headlines. Mm -hmm. So can we just start supporting each other before Mm -hmm. either one of our kings or queens lose their lives? Or can we start supporting each other when our kings and queens are doing something positive? Mm -hmm. I know that that doesn't sell because everybody likes the drama. But how do we change that narrative? Yeah. And that's why I created All Queens Army. Mm -hmm. Because I just get tired of seeing that. Mm-hmm. On my timeline, and it's I don't watch TV anymore. I don't mm-hmm. listen to the radio anymore. Mm-hmm. Every commercial is a cancer preventative commercial. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of hearing about it. Every commercial on the radio is about drama. Now I got to unfollow blogs because I usually follow them for entertainment and right. laugh at certain things. But now it's just all we do is push negative media about each other. Mm-hmm. And then we complain about white people doing this and white people don't know we do it to each other. Mm-hmm. So when do we have a platform where we can talk about things that are positive 
to uplift each other and yeah. stop waiting until we're not here no more. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm saying, because it's annoying. But anyway, y'all, act <laughs> let me get off my soapbox now. <laughs> get off my soapbox, queens. So, rest in peace to Nipsey Hussle. Yes. Our hearts go out to the beautiful Lauren London. And as well, and this is another thing that I have noticed. Nipsey Hussle has a mother. Mm-hmm. He has a grandmother. And a grandmother, yeah. Mm-hmm, that he was obviously very close to. Mm-hmm. And so, sister. Yes. Yeah, he did mm-hmm. have a sister and a brother. And a brother. Who looked just like him. Mm-hmm. So Lauren London, while she is, I'm sure, grieving and mourning, and it is very sad for her, there are other people who yes. are tied to this man who also have lost their king. Mm-hmm. So, right. Yeah, I know people mention his daughter, but, you know, a lot more, because we know Lauren London, so you say, mm-hmm. oh, Lauren London and his son... He had he had a daughter previous, yeah. yeah, prior to her. Mm-hmm. Yep. So sending out tons of prayers and condolences and peace, love, and light to his entire family. Mm-hmm. Not just Lauren, Lauren included, but his entire mm-hmm. family. Because there's more people who will be grieving that man than just Definitely. one person. So with that being said, Queens, we is signing off. Okay. We were supposed <laughs> to go 35 to 45 minutes, and here we are at one hour and eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that is despicable. <laughs> We're not going to do this the next time, y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, Queens, thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all know I love y'all so, 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 so much. So many of you guys have been harassing me about when this <laughs> season is starting. So I'm very excited that you are here listening now. So, again, please be sure to follow us on Instagram or Facebook if that is how, if you are not following us there and subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, or you can go to www.allqueensarmy.com and you can subscribe there. And again, please support my bestie. Why? Because she's my bestie and because I love her at Bubbly Bartenders. Please follow her there on Instagram and contact her at 443-657-3901 for any of your bartending needs. And with that being said, girl, we out. (laughs) Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And we will talk to you, Queens, again about the Queen conversations. I don't know what drama we're going to be talking about, and I hope it ain't nothing like this. Yes. I hope. Yes. I hope. Let this be the lowest of the Please, low. We yes. go higher from here. Yes, because that, that thing tore me up. But I love you, Queens, and I am out. We will be talking to you, Queens, again with the Queen Conversation segment in two weeks. We is out. Love y'all. Bye. Thank you for listening to the All Queens Army podcast. If you want to connect with Breezy Time and the All Queens Army Be sure to follow them on IG and Facebook at All Queens Army or head over and check out the All Queens Army YouTube channel. Until next time.